Today is Saturday, the 20th of January, uh, 2024, and we are all gathered here for the 116th session on Mindfulness for Beginners in the English Medium. And to our great fortune, we have Venal Bhante, Homagama Dhammaku Sulatero, representing Nisaranone Forest Monastery, joining into today's session. And I would like to welcome uh, Venal Bhante with great respect for on behalf of all of us. I would also like to uh, welcome all of you who are joining through the Zoom session, as well as the uh, live stream over Facebook. Our session will continue uh, commencing with the uh, in-session practice uh, guided by the Bhante, and then we will move on to the uh, uh, talk on mindfulness uh, on today's topic, and then we will uh, uh, go to the uh, question and answer session where we present uh, uh, those uh, written reports uh, and verbal questions from you uh, to Bhante for advice. And then we will wrap up the session. So I would like to hand over the microphone to Anil Bhante to continue with the uh, in-session practice. Over to Bhante. Much minutes. Thanks, Namanta. Hello, everyone. Today, to start the session, let's do a mindful sit-in session for a few minutes. With that, we can start today's program. So all of you, you should sit in a comfortable manner. Adjust your seat, make sure that you are comfortable. Once you are comfortable, you can gently close your eyes and be aware. Seated in a comfortable manner, you are mindful, you are aware. Notice what you feel when you pay attention to the present moment. Initially, you may hear surrounding sounds, a variety of sounds appear in your field of awareness. Now gently turn your attention towards the body. Notice what are the sensations that become prominent in your body. For some of you, the belly movements, according to the breath, might become prominent. For some of you, the posture would be prominent. For some of you, the breath touching your nostrils might be prominent. Simply bring your attention to the prominent bodily sensation and try to Keep your attention there. Try to observe few breath cycles. The breath goes in, touching your nostrils. It comes out, touching your nostrils.
time to time your attention might go to different things. Maybe thoughts, various memories, incidents might come into your mind. Sometimes pain, irritations, numbness appear in your body. And it's quite natural to feel sleepy when you do this. But among all those things, you know that you are breathing. You know that you are seated. We try to maintain that very awareness while other things come and go. Now as a group, let's try to continue sitting practice for a few more minutes.
Okay, everyone. Now you can open your eyes again. That's our time to do mindful sitting for today. This is just to, just to give you an idea so you can practice on your own. With that, Namanta, you can take over. Much thanks to Bhante for that excellent guidance and it is uh, very effective uh, to do this uh, during the session uh, to practice mindfulness. Now, next um, item on our agenda would be the talk on the chosen topic for today and I would li- like to invite Bhante again to commence the talk uh, for a new topic today. Over to Bhante again. Much thanks. Okay, everyone. We'll take some time to discuss today's topic. Today, we are starting a fresh one, a fresh topic, and it's somewhat related to the practice. This one is very much related to the practice, and we'll see how we can discuss, how we can experience the topic that we are having for today. So when we are mindful, when we practice mindfulness, when we introduce mindfulness, initially, we do as mindful walking and mindful sitting. That's how we introduce the practice to newcomers. We guide them to do the mindful walking. We guide them to do the mindful sitting. Then we ask them to practice for a few days. You walk in a comfortable manner and try to pay attention to the present moment, notice that your body is walking. Observe what you feel. Then while while sitting, you sit in a comfortable manner. Adjust your posture, make sure that you are comfortable and gently close your eyes. Try to observe the sitting posture. Notice that the body is breathing and simply continue that observation. This is how we develop the ability to observe ourselves. Usually our mind is distracted. That is how we function. We have a certain level of attention, but most of the time our mind is distracted. Let's say imagine you are going somewhere. You have a destination. You know that you are going to work. Probably are going to meet somebody. That you know. But when you leave home, how your attention goes? What happens to your attention? Usually you are distracted along the way. The signboards, they grab your attention. The memories, daily incidents, they grab your attention. People that you meet, they grab your attention. This way, you are heading towards the destination. That's how you usually function. Let's say you are having a meal. You have your meals, meal with you. You taste, it, you taste it every now and then. But most of the time, your attention, your mind is distracted. This is how we function. While functioning like that, we complain about stress. We complain that we can't maintain our attention. Various complaints are there. Complaints about mental health. Complaints about the inability to pay attention. Usually, let's say, when you go on YouTube or when you go on TikTok, or when you open a web page, our average viewing time is 15 seconds only. So when you browse internet, when you browse YouTube, you know, when you browse those TikTok videos, your average viewing time is 15 minutes, sorry, 15 seconds, right? Only 15 seconds. So in a way, when you browse the internet, you are training your mind to be distracted. Every 15 seconds, you get distracted. That is the training. In a way, we are meditating. It's not a good meditation, but anyway, we are training our mind. We are meditating to get distracted. 
that's what we are doing you browse go on finding different different web pages you browse go on finding different different videos every 15 seconds on average you are jumping to a fresh video or a fresh web page so number of hours you are on internet or you are on social media you are training your mind to be to get distracted every 15 seconds you should find a new object new item to pay attention so this is how we function and while functioning like that we complain about uh, in a, about the inability to maintain our attention you say you can't pay attention to your work you say you can't pay attention to your studies why because of your meditation you have done that meditation to train your mind to get distracted every 15 seconds after that training it's natural that you can't pay attention to the studies you can't pay attention to the work that you're having right so this is how we function while functioning like that we complain about our mental health we complain about the inability to pay attention but the mindful practitioner in a way they try to reverse this training while walking in a comfortable manner they try to keep their attention with the walking body while being seated in a comfortable manner try to keep your attention with the breath and try to do that training again and again every day 15 20 minutes at least 15 20 minutes of mindful walking at least 15 20 minutes of mindful sitting that's a start so that way you continue for some time maybe like few weeks few months you have to continue when you continue like this you are developing the ability to pay attention to a certain object that certain object could be your breath that object could be your sensations at your feet so again and again you are training your mind to bring your attention to that particular object time to time you get distracted that's fine that's the habitual distraction that we are having again and again after the distraction you can return back to the original object continue your observation for few more seconds again the mind get distracted again you return to the selected object this way we are training our mind when you do this training naturally with time you realize now you are able to maintain your attention with the breath or maintain your attention with the steps for a longer period earlier only you could only observe like three four breath cycles before getting distracted only few steps before getting distracted but now you are able to maintain your attention for a longer period so that's a good sign that the practice is working the mind is changing the ability to observe this particular object is increasing right so when when you practice like that gradually you start to see the changes in the selected object let it be your breath let it be your sensations of your feet you start to notice the changes of this particular object initially you don't notice it because your attention is not long lasting your attention is not with the same object but when you maintain your attention for a while when you maintain your attention for a longer period it is natural that you are starting to see the changes in the breath 
or the changes in the walking sensations. When you see that, we encourage you to continue observing these changes. Come closer and closer to this particular object and try to notice, try to observe how these changes are happening. Notice where these changes are leading you. That very observation is important. If the breath is changing, maybe it is leading you somewhere. The breath has a story to tell you. If the sensations at your feet, if they are changing, they have a story to tell you. So initially we thought, that the breath is constant. When we ask from a beginner, if they don't know mindfulness, they'll say that the breath is happening. Same sensation again and again. What's the purpose of observing this breath? They will ask us. They will say that the body is walking. Same sensation again and again. Why observe this walking body? That's the argument that they make. But what we do is that we suggest them that you should continue observing the breath. You should continue observing the walking sensations. And with time, try to see whether this particular object is changing. That variability is important. Now you are able to notice the change that's happening in this object. With that training, we recommend you to get, go, go to the day-to-day -day life as well. Daily life, you are doing so many things. You are probably walking to work. Probably you are having your meals. You do various, various things. While doing them, can you be mindful? It's not easy. It's not easy as formal practice. Some people find it very difficult because so many things are happening, so many changes are happening, they are unable to maintain their attention. They want that distracted mind to function in such situations. That feeling is natural, but we invite them again and again. Gently try to maintain your mindfulness with the task at hand. There is no point in overwhelming you with so many multiple tasks instead try to do one thing at a time and try to do it well that very training little by little develop and if you approach like that with some time not initially maybe like within few weeks you start to notice that now even the daily activities you are able to do them with certain level of attention that is important so this way we are training ourselves we do the formal meditation walking and sitting we go for our day-to-day -day life as a meditation we try to function as meditating that way you continue when you continue naturally you start to see how rapidly these things are changing now, earlier we thought that these things were solid. The senses were solid. The breath, is it's a solid breath. The sensations at your feet, it's a solid sensation. That was our initial idea. But when you pay attention continuously, you start to see how the perception of these sensations are changing. Some people think that the breath is dis disappearing, the breath is changing. But actually what happens is that the perception of the breath is changing. Now you start to dissolve the margins of your body. Sometimes you sit after a few minutes, you don't feel certain parts of your body. You don't feel the margin of your body. Earlier, before meditation, you had a very solid margin. A solid boundary was there. 
inside this is me i am outside that's the outside world and the people that solid boundary was there but for a meditator when they pay attention when they develop a certain level of mindfulness they start to see that the boundary is dissolving it becomes blurry that happens that happens to the meditator the breath the perception of the breath is changing sometimes it is appearing far far away sometimes it is appearing like outside of your body sometimes the breath is gigantic sometimes the breath is tiny so this way the perception is changing even the walking meditation you start to feel that you are maybe you are like a mammoth that is walking you have this mammoth legs you feel these gigantic legs while walking so that will be a very nice experience to see how our own solid perception is changing the legs become mammoth legs in the walking and the sensations become gigantic you feel so heavy in your body it feels like a mammoth walking with so many tons of weight right so these things are happening in our meditation even in the sitting meditation you'll have similar experiences so what is happening is that our solid perception is changing that is changing earlier we thought that it is solid it is not changing that was the ignorance talking the ignorance that's what it is saying the ignorance is saying this is solid the ignorance is saying that there is a boundary the ignorance is saying that the breath is not changing but the meditator when they develop a certain level of awareness naturally they start to feel the boundary dissolving they start to feel these sensations changing so that observation is very much important only after that level of observation we can get into today's topic what is the today's topic today we are talking about blending of senses the senses we think that with the eyes we see the sight with the ears we hear with the body we feel with the mind we think we we identify these sense doors and we think that these different senses they are functioning independently that is our idea but when you reach this level of meditation you start to see how the senses are blending together these different senses they are blending now in this new world there is some kind of a disease or kind of a thing and probably not a disease maybe an alternative way of perceiving the world they are saying synesthesia they say that some people when they hear music they can they can see colors according to the music rhythm that's real so for certain people they already have it if you go on youtube there's this really nice illustration about a girl who is seeing colors when she plays the violin they'll do this uh, animation and show us how this girl is seeing the music while playing the music right while hearing she will additionally see the music so those things are there with certain people but we think that we don't have it 
but when we reach a certain level of meditation we start to see how our senses they are mixing together they are blending together the margin become between these senses it becomes blurry sometimes even while sitting or walking you hear a certain sound according to that sound you start to see the various color patterns sometimes a certain thought come into your mind according to that thought you start to see the colors appear sometimes a certain bodily sensation is there in your body based on that bodily sensation you get a, a particular taste in your mouth so these things you can see how the senses are blending together that margin is becoming blurry it's a very nice experience and with meditation when things become more and more blurry you naturally start to experience these things now there are no longer solid margins between these sense doors now there is no solid margin between your body and the outside now the mind is wider mind is vaster and accepting the true reality that is what's happening usually we are so protective of our bodies we complain a lot trying to protect this body if some this if some disease comes we can't sleep or we can't be at peace till we get rid of that illness that size so many pain killers you can sell in this new world to just to avoid pain and just to avoid pain people will come and buy it why they don't want to face the pain they are so protective of this body that's why you can easily sell so much medicine so much unnecessary medicine in this world why because people are so protective of their bodies that's why you can sell so many anti vaccines in this world people are afraid that they might die people are so protective of these bodies so that's how we usually function that's why even the cosmetics they are so popular in this world you want to maintain this body in a certain shape in a certain color you have to maintain you don't want to accept the reality that this body is undergoing right so that's how we function we are so protective we are complaining a lot trying to protect this body with sickness we complain with pain we complain with whatever the issues come we complain that is how we function usually but the meditator when they see this margin the margin of your body when they see it becoming blurry naturally they let go of this strong attachment to their bodies because now they can't see a solid separation between the outside and the inside now they can't perceive a solid separation between different senses so it's a valuable or important milestone in your meditation now you are let, letting go of this delusion a little bit when you let go of that delusion you will be much more comfortable functioning with your body because now you are not so much much attached to this body you are not so much protective of this body when that change happen it is much easier to function in this world that's the zen analogy of a drunken man they say that a drunken man fallen 
from a vehicle will have lesser damage because that person is not you know holding on to his body so tightly he is somewhat flexible because of the alcohol of course but he is somewhat flexible falling down from that vehicle but a sane person a sober person falling down from the same vehicle would have much more severe damages because of that strong hold that's why even some people they just fall down few steps but in the process they break a leg what happens you have that strong grip towards your body you tighten your body while falling that's why most people they uh, have trouble surviving in water why because they tighten their body and that very grip will in their life it will make them drown right so these things are happening because we have strong attachment towards our bodies but if you let go of this tension your body is naturally floating in in water in a certain level we can just float in even in fresh water you can float why because there is no tension and you let go of this grip when you learn how to swim this is the very first lesson right don't try to struggle there don't try to grip so much instead relax your body be comfortable there that's the very first lesson when you have that comfortable nature your body is naturally floating right you so you can see now facing an accident It'll, then you go to swim whatever you do if you have a strong grip towards your body then naturally you get harmed naturally you get uh, so much difficulty naturally you get wounded because of this strong grip but the practitioner due to their practice it's not happening intentionally due to their practice they let go of this strong grip when you let go of that strong grip you realize that it's much easier to function and you'll have less friction in this world with this body that's a very nice achievement now you do your things sometimes you get you know cuts and scrapes sometimes you get wounded sometimes you face accidents sometimes you become ill but that strong grip is not there due to that you feel the wounds are happening but they'll naturally heal the sickness come they naturally heal accidents happen sometimes you have to somehow manage that situation so that way you are functioning in this world with much less friction why because you are letting go of that grip the practice will let you Uh, release that grip in your mind this is release, releasing because you are again and again experiencing that you can't see a solid boundary between your body and the outside environment that inside outside boundary is disappearing it becoming more and more blurry the boundary between different sense doors it's becoming more and more blurry now you start to feel that sometimes you see the sounds sometimes you taste bodily sensations sometimes you see the thoughts various various things are happening in you don't be afraid when you see these things most people they become fearful they think that they are going crazy some practices doing something to them they become fearful especially let's say the sound of silence this is another blending of senses when you hear sound of silence some for some people it is deep silence for some people it's a ringing sign a ringing sound in their head 
like a continuous bell or a gong going off in their head. So when they hear that, usually most people, they become fearful. Now I can hear this ringing sound in my head. Something is wrong with me. I should go see a doctor. That's the usual way of reaction. But the meditator, if they know that there are two varieties of sound of silence. One thing is that deep silence. Other one is that there's a ringing sound in your head. So those things are the blending of sense sensors. The sensors, they are blending. They are mixing together. When such things happen, when you experience that level of meditation, naturally you start to hear sound of silence. Naturally you start to see sounds. Naturally you start to see the colors of your thoughts. These things are happening. These things are happening. But you don't have to be fearful. This, this is another level of your meditation. You somehow courageously just have to face them. When you face them, you realize it's like watching a movie. You just sit back, relax, be comfortable. Just watch this movie. Make it a habit in your daily life. When you reach that level of meditation, the meditation becomes uh, effortless. It becomes much more comfortable. Even after a full day of work, you can do this as a way of relaxing yourself. Usually what happens is that we have so much tension, stress in your body, you need some way of relaxing. Most people, they relax in front of a TV, but that's not effective. Some people, they prefer sleeping as a way of relaxing. Still, that's not effective. Even after full night's sleep, you feel tired because you are not relaxing enough. When you do a walk-in session, sit-in session, towards the end of the day, that's more like rapid relaxation in meditation. That's why even scientific researchers, they have found that after 20 minutes of meditation, you get a certain level of relaxation in your brain, oxygen consumption levels. Relaxation in your brain the same relaxation, you need to sleep six hours in order to achieve that. I'm not suggesting that 20 minutes of meditation is equal to six hours of sleep. I'm saying the same relaxation levels are reached within that time. So you can see meditation, it's a rapid relaxation process. That's why some people, they can't bear it. You feel that your body is too irritating. Your body is going through some kind of a detoxing process. You can't bear it. It will be much more comfortable to sleep. But sleep, that process is very slow. It's not relaxing enough. So if you know the value of meditation, if you know how to be comfortable in your sitting and walking, that's the best way to relax. When you do that, you can really reduce the number of hours that you sleep. Right? So that way... You have to approach this. And when you approach this, this solid boundary between inside and the outside, it is becoming blurry. The solid boundary between different sense doors, like the eye, ear, body, taste, smell, mind, all those things, they become increasingly blurry. So these things are good signs. Some people, as a different way of perceiving the world, they are born with these conditions. But we too have them. We too have them. We don't realize, we don't see because of our ignorance. When you continue this way of practice, when you continue to develop your attention, we, with time you start to experience these things. So it's a very nice achievement or a milestone in your meditation. And when you see these things, you start to become more and more comfortable and you start to function with less and less friction. So with that note, we are ending today's talk. We invite you to practice and experience these things for yourself.
much ways to bante and uh, i would like to uh, next uh, invite sonali to uh, uh, commence the question and answer session over to sonali thank you thank you namanta ava sonali bante um i will start uh, today's session by uh, before i start it i will uh, run through the um, guide if you could share the slide if you have it handy uh, namanta um it's for the benefit of anyone who's um new coming into the program uh, or anyone who needs a refresher um it's uh, nisaran mane has provided us with two videos one is of mindful walking and the other of mindful sitting um once you watch these videos you will get an idea on how to start the practice um these are good to be sending anyone uh, to anyone who has requested some guidance um who wanted to start meditating as well um we will share these links on the chat with you so you can send them or ask us anytime and we are happy to send it over to you so um once you've watched them a set aside time to start practicing of your own um we would recommend starting with any amount of time and working your way up to about 2 hours um and then try to be mindful during the day whenever doing a repetitive start task as well uh once you have experience of yourself um write down in a report if you send it to us we can then share it with bante and get his feedback and guidance on your progress um you can send it to us via the google form or the email address which is uh, beginnersnv@gmail.com the google form address will also be and the email will also be in your chat uh shared with you and if you'd like to um send anyone any of the recorded sessions and uh, there is a link for that as well um and you can uh, if you're missing a session you can always watch them uh, watch it on this link that will also be shared on the chat with you um i will now move on to today's reports we have two reports re- received via google um sorry e- email there are any reports via the google form i will start with the first one mindful sitting sat in a comfortable position on the on a low stool noted how cold the room felt wanted to get a blanket but did not in breath was cold out breath less so breath noted around nostril area sense of peace experience various thoughts arose and passed away sometimes attention moved to breath sometimes to physical sensations and sounds heard a couple of times too this flow continued in the mind and body which was calmly noticed around um calmly noticed without adic- agitation after sitting sensation finished i remember changing the position once in a session also noted the peacefulness during the flow can't remember much else sat for one hour mindfulness during the day when walking the attention moved naturally to changing sensations in the feet during housework the awareness of hand movements feet movement position of body etc come um, come to the four mental proliferations are picked up earlier and earlier and then attention returns to the task at hand continue to notice an underlying feeling in the background which is difficult to explain in words more like a deflated feeling although a peaceful feeling is also close by things that used to be exciting seem not so exciting and things that used to be more elevated levels of irritation or anger seem to have returned their volume down it um, feels like life is more boring now the gap between feelings and behavior feels more prominent sometimes feel bored having to make small talk of about having behaving uh, as if enjoying with interacting with others amongst all this noticing a level of energy and peace in the background too from previous experiences i knew this shall also pass dear bante look forward to your valuable feedback much merit to the organizers end of report bante the life becomes boring if you can accept that boredom then 
you are becoming much and much closer to the peace within. If you try to get rid of that boredom, you are going in the reverse direction. Right? So that's what happens in meditation. The practitioners, they usually don't like this type of feeling. They need that, you know, intensity in life. They need to, you know, have a certain, certain issues, fights, various things in order to match their energy in life. But the meditator, they gradually re realize that life becomes more and more boring. It The contrast is reducing. Things happen. Still they do, but you don't uh, get, get that initial contrast that you had. The anger comes, irritations comes, but they are not so intense. Sometimes even the excitements, they are not so intense. Things are happening, but it's a good, good observation. Our practice is progressing. Now you don't have to fool it that much. It has its own momentum. That's the very idea. That's the very idea. That's the very idea of repetitive meditation. You can't do it forever. You can't maintain your practice. Instead, it should maintain itself. It should have its own momentum. That's the very idea. That's why in this very life, in this very life, before becoming ill, before approaching death, you have to do this. You have to make sure that the practice is maintaining itself. Practice will have its own momentum. If you reach that level, then deathbed, you won't have that much choice or you don't have that much control. But it's not a problem. It's the same process, another scenery, another incident passing. But if you don't have that control, then most people... They try to maintain their practice on their deathbed. Deathbed, they try to maintain their practice. When they are sick, they try to maintain their practice. Good, but still weak. Weak. You can't really maintain your practice when it, when it comes to illnesses, when it comes to your deathbed. You have to make sure that you do it beforehand. Let the practice have its own momentum. Let the practice maintain itself and when the, when you have that momentum, you realize whatever you do, it's going in the same direction. The practice is happening, progressing. In a way, you are doomed. You are doomed, right? That's what happens. You see the excitements are there, but it's not so exciting. Irritations, problems, anger, they are there, but it's not so intense. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. You buy something, your favorite, right? You go and buy. After buying it, you feel not so much valued anymore, right? You go and sit for your favorite meal. While tasting, you feel not so excited at, as I used to be, right? So is that a good sign or a bad sign? Most people, they'll think it's a bad sign. It's a bad sign. They don't like it. They want to enjoy the things that they like. They want to enjoy their meals. They want to, you know, have that intensity in in life. But the practitioner, they realize the anger is there. Irritations are there. But that intensity is lowered. Excitements are still there, but not so exciting. You eat your favorite meals, but it feels like not 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 so much enjoyable you spend time with your favorite people sometimes it's a pain in the ass right you have to do the small talk no silence is appreciated they want to ask questions they want the answers if you are silent they don't like right people will reject you saying that you are boring people will create some distance from you but it's a noble distance that's created. 
right so this way you are progressing little by little the peace will arise from within that's the very idea of the practice now there is no real need to maintain the practice just sit back relax and just enjoy the process the practice is maintaining itself that's the real achievement that's why you say even the day to day activities naturally the attention is present earlier earlier you can't forcefully even bring it to the present moment that's how you started but with repetitive practice you realize i'm walking my attention is mainly with the walking i it feels like i feel the every step it goes here and there still distracted still wandering happens still thoughts come but they are not long lasting that's the thing that's the real momentum that's there in the practice that's the real the pack that's the real practice that will maintain itself you can see that the wandering happens proliferations happen but they are not long lasting anger comes excitement comes irritations come but they are not long lasting they come they last for a while again they go away the mind is increasingly present right so that's the brief of this report just continue allow this process to continue see how the life is changing see how the peace will arise from within thank you subante uh, i will now move on to the next report sitting meditation sat with intention to watch breath as primary object watched in and out breath which soon disappeared noted sight discomfort a slight discomfort in legs but not distracting felt sleepy but noted mind being aware of this mind fitted between watching breath uh flitted between watching breath and watching the mind only ne- few thoughts appeared and passed unable to recall much else sat for 45 minutes walking meditation walked on tile floor noting sensations on feet after noting weight on both feet first noted left and right foot being placed then the lifting moving and placing of each foot the colder areas noted on both top and bottom of feet the uneven surfaces noted in places try to observe the beginning middle and end of each movement but in mind not able to note all of them mind proliferated for short period but came back to legs mindfulness in the day noted after a disagreement at home with family member the frustration in the mind the usually neutral feeling was replaced with annoyance irritate uh, internally it initially then um exasperation and frustration noted body feel bodily feelings tired as the mind became tired changed plans and decided to rest and face the long list of tasks the next day this helped the mind and body were well rested and ready to do the list of tasks that waited noting mind now naturally coming to bodily po- uh, postures or bodily sensations when doing daily activities sometimes with much gratitude to bante and organizers end of report bante okay when you function when you live such things happen arguments frustrations annoyance these things happen sometimes when such things happen usually what we do is that we we don't like this feeling i'm not talking about the argument that somehow happened but the feeling afterwards we we feel that neutral sensation is no longer there now the annoyance frustration these things happen sometimes you blame yourself right so this condition we don't like but the meditator they should develop the ability to accept this condition as a part of life sometimes you are peaceful sometimes you are irritated 
Sometimes you are happy, sometimes you are sad. That very acceptance is important. And that very acceptance, if you accept this feeling, that very acceptance will get rid of that feeling. You can't return back to the neutral sensation so quickly. When arguments come, just be with that irritation. When the sadness is there, just be with that sadness. What happens usually is that we don't like the sadness. We, we need sad, the sadness to go away. Happiness, it's fine. Sadness, we don't like. But the reality is that when you live, sometimes you are sad, sometimes you are happy. Can you welcome sadness? Similar to how you welcome happiness in life. When you are happy, you laugh. You smile. But when you are sad, you don't feel like crying. You feel like if you cry, it's shameful. Especially men. They feel like crying is a weakness. Right? That's what society has taught us. But the real idea is that when you are, when, when you are sad, you cry. When you're happy, you laugh. Can't we accept both as equal? That's not a weakness. That's the true practice. Now you are true to your heart. Whatever that's inside, you let it flow outside. You let it flow outside. No reservations. That very idea will release majority of your tension. Most people, they struggle. They want to suppress these feelings. They want to be brave in front of the family members. They want to be brave in front of the society. And they end up becoming mentally ill. That's what happens. That's the lesson in that, you know, that old TV show. Maybe it was done in uh, 1980s, I guess. It was on TV 1990s. Kung Fu, the TV show. They, they are the student, grasshopper. He comes and complains to his master, saying, Master, I see that you are, sometimes you cry, sometimes you laugh. I see that. And the master is asking, what is the issue? He says, we are taught a discipline. We shouldn't be behaving like this. You are a monk. That's his idea. Then the master is saying, when let the tears come, uh, when the sad, when the heart tells its sadness, when the joy flow unplanned, uh, in your mind, you are you are not planning anything. Instead, when the sadness comes, you just cry because your heart is telling you it's sad. When the happiness comes, you laugh. That very idea is the true practice. You are not having any reservations in your mind. Instead, you are behaving through to your heart. Do can't recommend this to a beginner. That's not correct. You have to have a certain level of practice in order to do this. Otherwise, they'll do whatever that comes to their mind. No, you have to have a certain level of practice. Then only you realize the sadness. Can I welcome it? The happiness I welcome. Can the sadness also be equal to happiness? The laughter we are welcome. Can we welcome crying as well? Right? So that's oh, that's what living is all about. When you live, arguments happen. You get irritated. You get, you get frustrated. You feel like blaming yourself. Whatever the condition, just accept it. Don't try to resist it. Initially, there is a resistance. That's true. We don't like it. But with time, you'll realize when you are sad, you are sad. That's all. You don't have to do anything about it. When you are happy, you are happy. That's all. You don't have to do anything about it. That very acceptance is important. With that acceptance, you realize that this is the true living. 
it's good to you know cry your eyes eyes out once in a while no, it's not bad it's good life living means once in a while you feel sad you feel frustrated you feel that you are lost in this world all those feelings are acceptable all of them are valid that's the very idea when you continue like that you will realize now your inside it becomes much more lighter right so continue your practice and with practice you'll experience this for yourself thank you bante um that's all the reports we have for today it's time for questions now if anyone has any questions please um raise your zoom hand or type out the question and i will read it out seems a bit quiet today and no one has any raised hands uh looks like we don't have any questions today vante um now manta would you like to then take over yes sir uh, thank you and much it's sonali that's fine uh and uh... thank you very much mr bante uh, for a very uh, insightful uh, collection of advice uh, over the session i would like to uh, uh, draw the uh, session to conclusion with uh, a statement of uh, gratitude and sharing of merits so i would like to associate all merits uh, collected uh, to venerable bante homa kamadhamma kusulathiru uh, representing nisaranan efforts ministry uh, for bante's commitment and dedication to our program and wish that these merits will uh, enhance bante's own uh, progress in mindfulness into the future and we wish that bante will also be able to uh, support us further in this program furthermore i would like to share merits with the the chief abbot of the nisaranan efforts ministry most venerable bante uday regamadham jiva mahatero for requesting this program to be formulated in this manner to uh, help uh, people learn uh, advanced techniques in mindfulness in, in this way i would also like to uh, share merits with all the wonderful organizers behind this program who are uh, working uh, hard putting in the in their effort uh, every week to uh, sustain the program this way i would also like to thank and pass on merits uh, merits to all of you who have joined through uh, zoom and through the live stream over facebook and i wish the all of you uh, uh, able to progress uh with uh, mindfulness practice and uh, reap the many benefits that these bring uh i would like to also mention that the program will continue as usual next week at the same time and i wish that you will all uh, be able to join that uh, session next week as well until then have a, a mindful and happy week ahead and i will uh, end this session now thank you very much